Hi, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about paracentesis right now. And like any invasive procedure, the thing you have to do is clean the area first. Usually we just use a little chloropreps to clean the area. The best thing to do is start in a circular pattern and kind of work off it. You can use uh, betadine as well. Once the area is prepped, you have to raise a little bit of wheel with some lidocaine. Generally, just small area needs to be anesthetized. So these are small catheters we're using. And then you put some deep lidocaine in as well. Once the area is anesthetized, you need to cut a little bit of an incision there to be able to put the catheter through. And you just want to make it right through the skin itself. You don't want to go too deep with this. The catheter itself is a pigtail catheter. It's a small little thing. And there's a trocar that goes through it. When you take the plastic sleeve off the trocar with the kits we're using, make sure you take that little uh, plastic thing at the bottom off. Otherwise, the catheter won't fit all the way on. When you slide the catheter on, you can see it's straightened out by the trocar. And then the, there's a syringe and a stopcock set up at the end. When you go to put the catheter into the patient, you're going to have a tendency to want to grip the end of the catheter. Don't do that because that's going to go into the patient. Even if you're wearing sterile gloves, you don't want to do that. So don't hold the end of the catheter. Just kind of let it, it's like a sore. Just kind of wiggle it in there. Get it through the sub subcutaneous tissue. You feel a little bit of pop there. And then you want to angle it up and then in so you tunnel the track that it goes in through. A little bit of pressure, and you'll see the patient jump a little bit when it enters the perineal cavity. At that point, slide the catheter off of the trocar. Don't pull the trocar out, because if you do that, the catheter may be outside the perineal cavity. And then once you've slid it in, you can remove the, the trocar from the catheter itself. At this point, you can take the, the dressing off, because it's easier to do that before you have all the, the tubing on it. The next thing you need to do is hook the tubing up to a bag to be able to drain this. You can see the stopcock on the end of it. The, the kit we have has a small piece of straight tubing with it with a needle on the end of it. Take the needle off and in the kit you'll see a little blue Christmas tree. Just kind of screw that onto the end of it. That's what you're going to attach to the drainage bag. The other end is a typical lure lock hooks into the stopcock there. And what we use to drain it is a Foley drainage bag, but it's one of the four liter bags that you would use for the continuous bladder irrigation. And these bags seem to work really well. Even though it says it's four liters, it actually holds uh, up to five liters. And what seems to work real well with these kits is to take the tubing and actually just kind of cut the end of it, cut that hard plastic end off, and it leaves you a little bit softer plastic piece of tubing. And then that little blue Christmas tree will just kind of fit right into it. You just kind of wedge it in there a little bit and throw a little bit of tape on it and that'll hold it in place. The, the tape kind of works to, to keep it from opening up and leaving a puddle under the patient. What you can do is open the stopcock at that point once you put it in there. You can see the drainage of the fluid coming out and the, the tube's just being uh, taped into place there. What I tend to do though is once I've taped it into place is actually take the bag and instead of hanging it off the stretcher, it seems to work better if you drain it onto the floor itself, I just tend to drop it right down on the floor. It can fill up a little bit better uh, down there and it drains a little bit more gravity to it. Next thing you have to do is just tape the catheter into place so if somebody trips over the bag, they don't wind up pulling the catheter out of the patient inadvertently. And But I find the easiest way to do this is uh, a couple pieces of tape, one piece of tape uh, right on the tubing there and just kind of onto the, uh, the abdominal wall and that kind of holds it in place and then because I'm a particularly a uh, type 1 obsessive compulsive individual I usually put two pieces of tape on the patient. Another thing that, that uh, I tend to do with these is actually tape it to the stretcher itself. Take a little bit of, the, of the, the tubing as it's running down and tape it to the stretcher. Again this this allows you that if someone is uh, going to trip over the bag or someone moves a stretcher and forgets about it, It's that will pull off before the catheter actually pulls out of the patient. One final thing I do is take a little bit of a piece of sterile gauze, wrap it around the catheter and just throw a piece of tape on it. 